This is my solar electric sailboat. A few people have been asking for more info about the boat, so hopefully this video covers a few things that get asked frequently. She's a Holland 30, designed by Ron Holland. Built in 1987, she's 30 foot long, displaces around 3.5 to 4 tons depending on the load. And to this day, the Holland 30 is the smallest hull designed to win the Sydney to Hobart on handicap. She was originally powered by a diesel sail drive, but I converted her to an electric outboard around three years ago now. The motor is a Torquedo Cruise 4.0. It's powered by 180 amp hours of AGM batteries and 700 watt of solar charge the batteries using two Bluetooth controllers. She cruises at around 3 to 3.5 knots, which draws around 750 to 900 watts. Range at that speed is around 30 nautical miles. Flat out, she'll do around 5 knots, but that draws a lot of power, so it's very rarely used at full throttle. Obviously, being a sailboat, the motor is really only used to get in and out of the harbour. But we do use the motor on the odd occasion to cruise if the wind drops off. Under sail, she'll scoot along at around 6.5 knots in a stiff breeze, either on a broad reach or running. So we generally like to sail to our destination rather than motoring. It's safe to say, the Torquedo has been a perfect conversion for our needs. In the three years of ownership, there haven't been many problems with it, but the one thing that has been an issue is a thing called cavitation. This is where the propeller sucks in air when it's close to the surface, which decreases the efficiency of the propeller and slows the boat down. This happens when the stern is lifted out of the water, not necessarily in big seas, but choppy seas where the waves are steep and close together. I went online and I found this anti cavitation plate from Austria for around 300 Australian dollars. If you're familiar with Torquedo accessories, then this will seem pretty reasonable given that it's made of stainless instead of the usual Torquedo plastic. The cab plate comes with all the hardware and it only requires a handful of common household tools to install. I would recommend using painter's tape to mark the position. And securing the leg with some Superflex 291 doesn't hurt either. The cab plate should be installed roughly 20mm from the top of the propeller. I found this to be the right distance so that it's far enough away not to be noisy, but close enough to maximise its operating window. Once installed, it definitely looks the part and suits the aesthetic of the outboard. Overall, the results are pretty positive. The boat is able to maintain good boat speed when in rocky seas, as the propeller seems to be working more efficiently. It's a noticeable improvement from before, where the boat would slow down considerably, requiring more throttle input. So hopefully that answers some of the questions out there. If you have any more, leave them below.